everybody, welcome to Endgame. We're gonna have some fun. So today we're going to talk about trolling. I'm here with Psych and Ghoster, who's always streaming for us. And today you're actually going to have <laughs> yeah, something to say yeah, this yeah. time. It feels different being on the stage and seeing being the one looking at it. <laughs> you get to be in a different brain space. Yeah. Is it like a little bit? Is it more uh, anxiety-inducing being the cameraman or being on stage? Uh, I would definitely say being on stage. Usually, cameraman, it's paying attention to you, and I might sole focus is on paying attention to what you guys are doing you know but being on stage it's more of a okay what do, what do i want to say you know how do i want to word it there's a lot more going on okay so. well i mean you've chimed in before i feel like you'll be fine <laughs> okay so today we're gonna let's get into the main topic and we're yeah. talking about trolls and so what's the is the first thing you want to do is sort of check in with people yeah so i mean Trolling can mean different things to different people, but I'm curious if anyone has any experiences of being trolled that they might want to quickly share if they've ever. Or I if, would say if, of trolling. Here. If anyone, some of yeah, us must have been trolling, been a right? Troll. I, yeah. I have a. I have okay. An so, so sure. as we all know, is it okay if I face the crowd? Yeah. 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 Okay. So as we all know, uh, this game is getting popular from uh, streamers. And we all know when someone says try hard seven, what everyone in the chat does. And, you know, that could be seen as trolling. That's all I have to say. I actually have not heard of this. I might explain it a little mm -hmm. bit. No. Is this no a secret explaining? that we're not okay. supposed to know? Uh, you know what? Maybe I can just briefly. So there is just a paper, a research study released about trolling. And it's basically about like, it says it's the deliberate provocation of others using deception and harmful behavior on the internet, which often results in conflict uh, or like high emotional reactions. So it's kind of like that. It's kind of like someone intentionally creating a situation in which you feel negative emotion. Oh. Sweets, now you're bringing up one of the problems, I think, of the discussion about trolling is that people might have different ways of defining it as well. How did you see it in your mind, I guess? Like, do you sort of agree with that definition that you just read from the paper? Is that what you kind of think about? Yeah, I think, I mean, trolling, but, the, well, there's some, I mean, some people refer to trolling as a funny thing. Yeah, like, <laughs> Ghoster's patting your head right now. He's trolling you, but, like, so that, it's not, That's like Ken M, right? Like, his whole thing is that he's not malicious. And so, like, does that count? If he's, if no one's getting their feelings hurt, is that trolling? I don't know. I mean, it's, okay, I guess let's poll people. Thumbs up if you think that's trolling, or thumbs down if you think that's not trolling. Well, so what? Thumbs up if you think that it has to be malicious or you have to cause some kind of emotional oh. distress. Uh, Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to cause emotional distress in order for it to be trolling? Okay. No. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> it's yeah. mostly no. Interesting. So some of the people said um, most people didn't agree with that. It doesn't have to be malicious. Yeah. And so what does it have to be? Like, what is what trait mm -hmm. can we say? Like, this is this is what trolling is. Like, what can you say about it, then? I mean, do any I, of those people have a definition? Yeah. Okay. You're literally a troll. I, I'm the real troll here. Yeah. <laughs> so I... <laughs> so maybe I can explain troll to more people. To troll people, you must lure them in your... In your... In your trap to... To get a... Hmm. So, like, there has to so, be, like, that's... So there has to be like that, um, not sabotage, but it has Set to be sort of to... like a little bit of espionage or like, what does that yeah. mean? Like you have to like fool people? Lure. lure That's there. a good one. Uh, I mean, yeah, lure, going lure, back yeah. to the days of 5.3 when I used to particle spam <laughs> my avatars, um, that could be considered trolling because it's intentionally um, causing, not necessarily causing harm to your system, but it is bringing yeah. your frame rate down from something reasonable down to completely unreasonable to the point where some people were actually crashing out unintentionally um and that could be considered troll because i could pull it out at any time but let's talk about that for a second so why what's your motivation for doing that then um i was just testing and i said let's see how far i can push this 
And then that mm-hmm. one avatar that I pushed to that point, I just kind of kept because if I went any further and I was like, eh, okay, that's getting into abusive ter- territory and I don't want to get banned from VR chat. So I'm going to keep it at this level and I'll only do it if people allow me to do it. Just so, so you're not doing it, it with the intention of abusing people, but you're willing to sort of push the line to see how far like you can get away with this tactic before it destroys oh, the yeah. system. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, I imagine that has to be a big part of it, right? It's sort of about pushing the boundaries. Like it, it's a mm. very, it's something that young people do a lot, right? Like as you're growing up, you've got to play and you have to push the boundaries. Like you can't just fall into line immediately. You have to see how, if the test, like the network, like test well, what society like, will allow uh, you to do. Parents as, so you know how teenagers, when they grow up, they start, you know, challenging their parents. I kind of think of that like this, the same thing. Is they're they're challenging the mods, you know? Oh, I'm going to do something bad and dangerous or, or whatever or yeah. harmful, and let's see how far I can go before the mods actually do something about it, pushing the and boundaries. then not care afterwards. I, mean, and I so see that as sort of a that. positive thing too, or like well, maybe a necessary uh, thing. I do feel like sometimes you get into those exchanges with people who are trolling, who you're asking them not to do something, and they're saying, "What am I doing? What am I doing? And what do you mean?" and kind of thing, and they're kind of. It's maybe they're just only aware of the humorous part and they legitimately don't think that they're trolling. I mean, I had experience one time a while ago when I talked to someone who was cursing and kind of like being disparaging to other people. And I was like, dude, come on, you need to be more mature than that. And he got really upset and offended. And he was like, what do you, they got, what, what do you mean, man? I was just, I was just joking around with people. And, and he was really upset that I had labeled his behavior as trolling um so it's really interesting because people can interpret the same thing differently it's like how do you handle that exactly i wonder if we can get that get there in the discussion like where you draw that line because i feel like that's sort of impossible like i don't think we'll be able to agree like where you yeah set up the boundary right. oh yeah, um, CT. yeah Lau. Or, oh, i was gonna have sarah's comment first oh so what sarah was saying is that uh trolling is derived from the phishing tactic but in this instance, it's based on baiting someone for a response. Hmm. And so At least that's the traditional of the response. Yes. Yeah, you, you, you post something in hopes that people will react negatively to it, and then you are amused by the fact that they are getting upset. Yeah, like my yeah. trolling avatar, you, uh, whenever I did it, you would always hear, God damn it, Ghoster! How dare you! Put it away! And it can be negative I or was positive. Like, <laughs> So you're getting some um, attention, even if it's bit. negative, it's like we all get to focus on you and that's good. <laughs> or like mm-hmm. that feels good sometimes. To me, yes. To me, it's it's good. <laughs> so go ahead, CT. Uh, CT, yeah. So I'd say in my opinion, like the, the drawing the line is like depending on the individuals themselves is on how well they can take what is being dished out to them. I mean, it's like what's this per se? Like uh, I were to... Like, uh, having a loud oh, noise. It's just me. Yeah, you, the, the particle okay. spamming, that decreases yes. frame rates. So, like, for me, um, it, I'd probably find that, I don't know, if I, like, I'd freak out about it. If I find out it's you, I'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool how you're doing that. Or some people would be like, oh, man, that's not even cool at all. It's, it's just annoying. Like, I don't know, there's just different uh, lines, I guess, that you, certain people have. So... I guess the question here is about assertiveness. Like, I guess if someone has a perception of a different line and they're crossing it and the person receiving that asserts themselves and says, hey, I don't, you know, what you're doing right now is causing a negative emotional state for me. Um, And the person ignores that or that feeds their behavior and makes them enjoy it more. Perhaps that's another level um, than when people just think it's funny and that the other person might be thinking it's funny as well. But it's still a little bit cloudy. I'll get back to that in a second. Yeah, this is what? a personal opinion of mine. Like, there's griefing, like what Ghoster was doing, the particle effect and everything. That's more like griefing, you know? True. Trolling is trolling is like trying to get a response out of someone. Um, like, hey, does your, does your mom know you're gay? Ooh. No, haha, <laughs> you're gay. You know something? <laughs> <laughs> but but like that's like a joke. Like yes, you can tell people jokes to get a response. But um, then there's like yanking your chain. I'm just messing with you, not really trying to upset you, kind of. So well, it's like I don't really see that as trolling. Like take it as trolling. Well, whether they take it as trolling or not, that's one thing. But but yeah, like, your reaction to the troll. A troll's coming up to you, looking for 
just to basically, you know, upset you and get some reaction out of them. <laughs> All you got to say is very sarcastically, that's nice, and walk away. Ooh. That's part of Everybody kind of like... Say bless your heart. <laughs> I like yeah. bless your heart. Hey, that's nice. <laughs> I'm writing that one down. Troll hugging. Oh. So Troll Sarah hugging, yeah. That, that griefing is really just a different a different level of trolling. Like it's and all baiting for a response. So trolling or griefing, yes. it's all it's 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 all in the same boat. It's just different levels. Well, the art of griefing, as I shall now name it, um, it's it's the active destruction of somebody else's time and effort, or you know the interruption or you know, the inability for them to access that, such as, you know, the classic Minecraft griefing, where people will come in, drop a bunch of TNT in your house, and then blow it all up, and now your house is gone along with all your items. You've spent time and effort putting um, that all together, collecting all the resources, you know, making it, you know, decorative as you see it, only to have somebody come in in 10 seconds and completely destroy it. You know, it's interesting. I think that um, part of how this paper defines trolls is saying that they, there's two types of uh, empathy. There's cognitive empathy, where you can think about what the other person is feeling. So I can think you're feeling uh, embarrassed or you're, you're feeling that it's something is humorous. And then there's affective empathy, which is feeling what the other person is feeling. And the paper found that people who, who are malicious trolls don't have the ability to feel they're, they're lower in that trait in ability to feel what the other person's feeling versus thinking about what the other person's feeling. And so it comes back to griefing where they're not feeling negatively. Like when a troll is doing something that's making someone feel really bad, they themselves often are not feeling negatively. They're feeling positively or getting some kind of enjoyment out of the other person. And the other person is kind of on the other end of the spectrum and kind of suffering or really not enjoying things. I don't know, maybe that's a way to well, also view how, difference. What do we do about that? And like, if the person, like if there's an absence of guilt or an absence of actually understanding the emotional effect you're having on someone, can we blame that person for doing it? Or like, or how do you redirect them? How do you help them? If they physic if they actually can't emotionally understand it or feel it? Well, the, that's the issues that they, this payroll's around the trolls tend to be, like malicious trolls tend to be high in, uh, Psych psychopathy like uh, and sadism so they tend to enjoy causing other people pain um if they're and again this is one type of troll so it's not i think that some of the types of trolling that we're talking about are not actually fitting into this category which is really interesting but the, this type i think it's hard to teach people um but it's, it comes back to what mcmuse has talked about with uh if you show them love and try to, if you ban them, but then say, hey, we really want you to be in this community, if you can abide by these standards. Because I do think that there's this sensitivity to rejection that trolls have. And so if they're called out on their actions or whatever, they build up this whole vindictive side to them where they spend all of their energy and time trying to get back at the people who have abandoned them, essentially, um, as opposed to trying to create like a positive, healthy relationship. So they still, wait, so you're saying like if, if as an example, like someone comes up and trolls you and then you reject them. And now because you've rejected them, they have this tie to you. They still want a connection. And even if it's completely negative, they'll seek you out and continue, you know, that behavior. So yeah. if you can, if you can flip that and start loving them, then they can continue the connection, but it's not as harmful. Or yeah. is that where we're going? Yeah, we're uh, teaching them to uh, interact in a positive way. Um. So I will say this, um, I, I use that method. I use the hug a troll method in my community because it, it, the, when you have the different levels of trolling, sure, you have the completely malicious ones that will go do everything they can just to be disruptive. Or are they truly just kind of in a negative mindset and not thinking clearly? And some of them may not even be intentionally being negative. And I feel like the hug a troll method kind of lets you gauge that out. And if that doesn't work, then you know what type of person you are dealing with. But like, like Sykes said, yes, they do seek you out. And that's another issue. And even the really negative ones will always do that to try and get back at you. But the ones who aren't really trying to do it completely, uh, like maliciously, you can actually convert that person into a good community member. Actually, one of my mods was trolling me um, when I first started, we start, first started the community. And, and now he's one of my mods and trusted community members that, that he's one of the more trusted people in my community right now. That's nice. Mm. That's awesome. It also depends on a person's tolerance. 
the one that's being troll, how much patience he has and so on and so forth, his own personality. Uh, you know, some people might have a longer fuse and like McMuse said, you know, and try and and uh, understand where the guy's coming from and whatnot. For me personally, it's kind of like, that's nice, walk away. Yeah, like, I, I appreciate you, McMuse, and I wish and there's going to be, I'm going to funnel cryptocurrencies in your direction because you're a hero for hugging these people. Because, like, I can't do it. Like, I... I have the heart, and I, I and I wanna I wanna share love, but I'm like hypersensitive to like noise and like like I think it's fairly easy to upset me, and it would be hard for me to handle it in the way that you're doing it. And so like I appreciate when someone can effectively well, do that. Well, VR is a little different though because you do have all this sensory perception, right? I mean, sure, a chat room is is a lot different. You can you can kind of feel it out in a different way, but but I've heard people say that trolling. And really negative, nasty people are going to be the the make or break aspect of of scaled VR. If you had a thousand people in a room, that could get really chaotic. I don't really know what the answer is, other than just developing unique moderation tools just for VR. This reminded me. I have a friend in real life. Um, I was hanging out with her one day. Saw her on the internet. She's just trolling everybody. She's just being the worst kind of troll ever. I turned mm -hmm. to her. I'm like. I asked her, why are you trolling everybody? Why are you being so rude to everybody? And she just says, well, because people did it to me, so why should I not be able to do it to everybody else? Oh. It's kind of like abusive behavior, like in families and stuff, yeah. and it will just keep going down. Like, what are we supposed to do about that? Like, it's like, is, is, is that just going to be a factor that, like, as long as the behavior exists, you sort of create more trolls? Like, you sort of emotionally yeah, distress I'm, people enough maybe. and they become the troll? Yeah, it's 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 like bullying. There's like reactive bullying, reactive bullying. So there's like reactive bullies who have been developed by being bullied, and then there's other types of bullies who go off and start the bullying without ever having been bullied before. I'm guessing that these that the characteristics from that line of research probably apply to trolls because bullying and trolling are can can be similar in some ways. Um, but in terms of helping people, I think it's hard because it's like. On one hand, you want to create a community that has a good rapport with each other. You know, everyone has a good rapport with each other. And so you don't want these people kind of ruining it. But then you also want to help them and integrate them into the community. But is it actually possible? I mean, I don't I don't know if some of these people are, are going to, you know, if they get so much enjoyment out of making others suffer and have negative experiences, then I don't know if we're ever going to really be able to teach them. Um, it, within the community, like, of course, individually, that if they were able to see a therapist and kind of work on those traits, then that would be one thing. But it's actually really hard to get someone who's like, who's narcissistic or a psychopath to go see a therapist, because the definition of those the traits means that they probably don't think there's anything wrong with their behavior. So how do you get them to even want to change their behaviors in the first place? But isn't this community different? Like, I remember when we, uh, in the anime community episode, like, we're talking yes. to some people who, like, sort of were trolls, and but then they found a community that they could belong to, and that, that behavior sort of naturally goes away. Like, it's different now because it's sort of embodied, and this feels like it's really happening. And so, like, if yeah. I were to get banned from VR chat, that would be a big deal. That's a lot bigger of a deal than me getting banned from some forum somewhere, because I feel like I, I agree. actually know people here. Uh, band's been following sweet. Oh, okay. So. That wait, that cat. Can you come up to the center? I'm sorry. You know what? Forget this idea of lining up over there. Let's line up right in front of the stage where we can see people. Hey, you're blocking me, right you, sir. You're blocking uh, uh, me. Hey, this is a prime example of a troll. Whoa. Different avatar. Mm, that, there, well, exactly. This is a oh. prime example of a prime troll, example. Hey, that's nice. Hey, wait. say it with me. Everyone, say it. Whoa. That's nice. You see, and That's leading nice. group tactics, so currently he, he is actually leading people to troll this guy. He doesn't feel that he's had enough attention. Well, it's, it's so subtle that it's hard for me to determine what's what, right? Like, I think that's a big part of it is that sometimes it's not obvious, yeah, the, and it's, it's, it's very hard for me obvious. to tell. Um, um, wait, Dad Cat, what were you going to say? Well, I was going to say, like, Sweet Snack, he's like kind of enabling me. There. He's kind of triggering me, dude. Well, and, and that's it's what they bad. do. Is there is there out there for the reaction? And he mm. was starting to get a reaction out of you, so he continued, and he tried to bring more people in to get you more flustered, to get you to bring even more reaction out. 
and stroll. But, but what do we do about it? Because like in this instance, the like if these if you guys are actually trolling, you're awfully polite because like we're still able to have a conversation. Like we've had you know episodes of Endgame before, or other people you know other shows in the metaverse here that become very difficult because like the crowd gets out of control or there's too many people that are like upsetting things and so yeah. like if, if this is what trolling is i'm it's like this is not so bad <laughs> yeah um, bandit i feel like it only like unless you laugh then they don't really count as trolls uh, so it has to effectively no. be humorous to count wait, wait, the the victim the person being trolled or the troll themselves laughing no, I think he's talking about the crowd itself, like the people around you. Well, yeah, let's actually get into the trolls that have streams, because, like, I haven't watched those. But, like, so that's a, a new thing to me where, like, a troll, and it's almost that they're just a comedian or something, right? Like, they're just, per, per, they're per, they have, like, an entertainment value, and there's a bunch of people who are willing to follow them as they go around the metaverse or wherever and sort of stream... I, like, have you watched any of these? Like, because I actually don't know anything um, about them. Streaming trolls. I, I have watched a few, and I, you know, being a part of this community for such a long time, I just kind of go, how, you know, that, how dare you, you know, pull out only the bad stuff, only the people who really, you know, aren't committed to the community yet, and just take their experiences and put them at face value for everybody else. But, I mean, yes, to some people, it's hilarious, the the stuff we do here. It's crazy. It's ridiculous. It's really not of any country of origin like you can't say our behavior here is solely linked to the u.s or europe or russia or anything like that it's we said it many times it's its own country and that own country has its own set of rules and standards and our standards are so outlandish compared to many other countries that people will come in and say well, this is crazy. I like it. Let's, you know, let's record. You know, there's vulgar people because they can be. It's a free application. If you find it, you join it, you go do whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. Sarah too. had a quick comment on the on the streamers. Oh, yeah. Um, we're basically, basically, it's as she said, they're basically the, it's just a prank bro idiots who troll for a hugely negative response to garner attention. So <laughs> they're... It's I don't understand why. Like it's hard for me because because I don't understand it myself, right? Like I'm not following streamers who are actively bothering people, and so I don't get the benefit or why other people would want to do that. Follow I, people who are sort of like money, so negative. Is money. Some people make hundreds of dollars doing their live streams because people pay. But that's why the troll or the streamer would do the the behavior. But why are all the people following it? Like why why do we have that need to sort of? Well, they've developed an attachment oh, as well. Hey, man, because... They can get people to spam and try hard seven, and that <laughs> when people yeah, spam try yes. hard seven, it's like a it's like a hive mind look uh, like this. Try hard seven. Uh, you know what? I I, I gotta Shameful. say, stop trying to make <laughs> try hard seven. It's not gonna happen. Uh, Sarah had a really good comment about tribalism. Uh, that's part of the reason that that the the large fan, the large group who were fans of these trolls like them because they're they're part of a special group. They're all fans of you know this YouTuber, yeah. and they they see themselves as a tribe with the other folks who are fans. Oh man, what do we do about that? <laughs> I think well that comes back to attachment and belonging and sense of belonging. So I think we're still talking about a similar construct here where people are attached to the lead troll who's the streamer and they feel that you know when they engage in actions that are similar that the that the, the lead streamer, you know, validates that they feel closer to them and like I still think it's about a need to be close to others and attachment which drives a lot of our um behaviors in general, you know. I just get frustrated because there's got to be a, a equally or as many very positive streamers out there who are just being kind and like, but why are they not popular? Why why is our attention drawn to the other side of it? So from, from what I see um, in some of these videos and going back to, you know, the teenager mentality of, you know, I want to be my own thing. I want to have the freedom. Maybe some of the reasons that these uh, kids are watching, you know, these streamers do these bad things is because these streamers are able to get away with it. They're able to do it. They're able to have uh, do whatever they want, whenever they want, however long they want to, and it's their freedom. They can do it at any point in time, whereas somebody like you or me, we wouldn't do that because we think more about the consequences of, you know, here, let's go break a server, and now so we're banned from that server. That makes sense whereas to me. So you're talking about care. like this this buildup of like rebellious energy and then you can sort of live through somebody else's experience. That's just like rebelling yep. against the system. That makes yep. sense. Those, 
people who upload those YouTube videos where they're the whole it's just a joke it's just, it's just the whole uh, it's just a joke man you know go out they do something horrible to someone they get all steamed up it's just a joke it's just a joke there's a camera there's a camera and their audience they got this huge audience following them laughing I just feel like the audience doesn't feel like they're responsible for what's happening to these people and they shouldn't have to feel bad about it. But they are directly responsible, in my view, because, mm. like, you're sort of in a, by giving your attention to someone on YouTube, there's yeah. a direct one to one. Like, there's a, a number that goes up. If I watch your YouTube video, you get a view, and that actually gives you a little bit of money, and that enables you to continue streaming or whatever activity you're up to. Cat? So I'm enabling you by watching. It reminds me of this movie, I forget what it was called, where, like, there's a serial killer who would like kill someone and they would die faster depending on how many people were watching the live stream of it. It was a pretty intense thing. So it was like, uh, oh, no one should watch it. But, but yeah, obviously people a, do. Yeah. And then it like killed the person, you know, it killed the person faster. So it's kind of people shot in Freud taking pleasure in other people's pain. You know, that's that's a whole construct that people can experience and things like that. So. That's terrifying. I, I forget what movie that is, but that premise, like, because I, I believe it. Like, I believe that if that happened in real life, yeah. there would still be people that would tune in. I think that was iRobot. I don't think no. so. Um, no, sweet. Right. Yeah. Are, are you up? Or are you just dancing yeah, yeah, for us? Okay. Uh, and I'm up. I'm up. So, as we all know, this game is free. But imagine if you had to pay for it. You wouldn't troll, would you? If it was $50, you wouldn't troll, would you? Would you? You'd also never find it. Yeah, but I'd pay 50 that, bucks. That's what makes this is the community, oh, well, is it's free. Okay, I think he, as I was saying, he's making an interesting well, point, yeah. Game. yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't well, buy I mean, this that's game. That's a great point. Let's actually talk about that for a second. What were you, you going to say, Psych? Well, I, yeah, I think that adding monetary value, you've invested in something. But I think Overwatch is an example of where there's a very toxic... There's a huge toxic community. Although I will say that that's different because I think Overwatch uh, specifically elicits toxicity because of the way that they force people to lose games and through their matchmaking, all that kind of stuff. So I do think that if people paid, that perhaps they could be more, um, uh, you know, invested and have more. But I think that more than payment, I, I think more than payment, it's time and effort. Yeah. I've been like a member sure. of VR chat for three and a half years. Like I. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know. I've invested a lot. I Minecraft server, a solo player, and I've I have 500 hours on there. And I, dude, I almost fell in the lava, and I honestly would have like destroyed my computer if I did it. And that's why <laughs> time because invested time and equals less trolling. Everyone say it together. Time money. invested in equals hey, less trolling. Sweet, sweet snag. We're not trying to control you, the crowd. We're, it, I love hearing your thoughts, and then afterwards, it's good to sit down and and not try to get the whole, you know take over it's interesting basically because the entire I can't show tell, i can't tell what your intention is because the, i believe in a lot of the things you're saying you're making good points okay anyone here who has a problem stand up now and i'll address it right no, now no no sweet i see i think this is an example where like people might not be aware and that's why i think like now we've asked you not to address the crowd which is good because like uh, i guess do you see kind of why or are you well, this, is what, he needs. About this that? is what he needs <laughs> Yes. Don't yes. touch me, please. Give him, give him hugs. <laughs> I thought this yeah. was a comedy club, and I thought, and I did not know what I was getting into. I'm gonna be honest. I thought this was a comedy club a talent show, and I was gonna get up here, I was gonna tell some jokes. I don't even know what to do right now. No on. worries. Actually, if you sit down, I'll open it up. You can do like a, we can do like a mi open mic after the show, and we'll, we'll we can actually try and be funny. Um, uh, McMuse, you're up. On the topic we were uh, discussing just before this uh, about people streaming and, and harming others and the audience kind of getting enjoyment and, and often laughing at it. And I think, I think that's really – I think it's interesting to see that behavior because there is a natural inclination for, for a lot of people in general to laugh in, in movies when someone like hits their head on a sign or, or a doorway or walks into a, a – a glass wall or something it is kind of strange because you'll see someone get horribly hurt on youtube and there's a strange following of people that love it and and find it funny and even when i was younger i remember laughing at someone like hitting their head on something and and now that i'm older i think about it more but i remember finding humor in that when i was younger as well so i don't fully even understand the psychology behind it myself 
Hmm. Yeah, that's shot in. Well, shot in for it is taking pleasure, finding humor in. I'm actually not 100 percent sure if humor is uh, in the definition of shot in for it, but getting a pleasurable experience out of other people's pain. So that's kind of maybe a little microcosm of it. The the first point you made was interesting because like I I do that like there there are people who are trolls and I laugh at them like it's sort of an automatic response especially because sometimes they're funny and so like and that does give them a positive feedback right like if if everyone starts laughing with you that's encouraging you to continue the behavior yeah damn it and I'm a part of that because I'm laughing at them so I'm so it's your fault so it's, it's your my fault. fault I'm sorry Let, let's start heading towards the conclusion. Is this um, like a podcast? Let's start thinking about the future. Like, what's, yeah. what's going to happen? Like, yeah. I, because this is such a strange problem, and I, I don't know how to solve it or if we should, or I, I can't imagine what we're going to do. Um, I think what we're seeing with like Facebook and things, and not saying this is a positive thing, but I think we're going to see more filtering automatically of content. Um, I think that we're going to see like automatic moderation. Um, so if people <sighs> are do saying, so I know, it's really, I think that's where it's going to head though um or it'll be like the wild wild west and have people moderate their own communities and rooms and let you know have standards but i, I don't know that that scares me because the more you filter it and the more sort of monolithic or the, the more zuckerberg zucker nerd is in charge of what we're seeing the more there is <laughs> like a need that. for people to troll and break the system right like we actually do yeah. need to respond against that and so, like, if we're going to start going down that rabbit hole, I think the response only grows stronger because we're going to feel it in our bones that, like, something is wrong. There is this hierarchy that we need to, re you know, rebel against. That's what – it's rebellious behavior, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I support that. I think that would be good to rebel against. But I don't know how much control we have over it. I'm hoping the optimistic view is sort of hopefully what we'll see in VR chat and in the metaverse in general. Like, some, you know – whoever was talking about the investment of money and then you were talking about well actually there's a huge investment of time like the more like if facebook was a place that you visited and you actually it was more vr and we, you could embody and you could hang out with your friends and all this great stuff then there is like a high price to pay i guess if you get banned but like i, I don't know what rules to have like what law to set in place to go like oh you've crossed a line now you're going to be banned from the service like who's going to determine where that line is yeah and it, i don't know does anybody have any answers out there go ghost or what do you think um i, I definitely think self-moderation um should definitely play a part in it but you know as a rebellious young soul um some people will obviously decline to uh that and go against it fully um but as you can see here, we've started to develop a community that says, okay, if you're not going to act the way, you know, in a polite and formal manner, but, you know, still be humorous, then we won't allow you to be here anymore. And I think some of the community members will, or some of the new guys are starting to understand that of, you know, the old community here, we have a certain standard that we play by, you know, it's okay to joke around and it's okay to make fun of each other in certain ways, but in other ways, it's not. And if you try to, you know, jump in on that train, it's a very quick swift, um, <laughs> such as this guy. We, um, in a rough, you know, speech. Your mom's gonna so, die of cancer. I definitely nice. think that moderation is definitely going to be a lot more prevalent, but in hidden ways. Like, like, mm. as, like I said, the automatic filtering will be nice, um, but also... Um, just, you know, group moderation. So not necessarily needing, you know, these tools such as the ability to kick somebody or the ability to remove somebody from a room or remove them from your sight or sound or hear them at all. That's nice to have, but just, you know, if everybody says, hey, you know, can you please not do that? We can help mold the community, but it will take time. Yeah, modeling as a community, I think, is the best way to reduce trolling and uh and and spread the love you know i mean that's all <laughs> Can I add one spread the positivity yes, yes please 
No, so I don't yeah, like it. Other, I think the other factor in uh, behavior is more people getting VR. I think as VR becomes more common and more easy to get, um, because desktop users don't tend to understand yeah. as easily how much this is like being in a room with another person, whereas VR people get that. So you see more trolling from desktop people because they just don't necessarily understand how it, you know, it does feel like like real. And whereas yeah. VR people are less likely because they're here. So as VR becomes more common, I think trolling in VR will in itself drop because more people are here as opposed to watching yeah. through a window. Good point. That's true. Can can like, the more steps in between, like in an internet forum, there's more trolling than there is outside on the street in real life, right? Like, right. and the yeah. closer we approach real life, the, maybe the less, less, you know, trolling there will be. And this, this is this getting is also, closer. The, I think this is Facebook's biggest advantage is that they already have pre-established networks of people who are know each other in real life. So that's going to be their biggest advantage when they form a social virtual reality network is that um, it'll be more like real life um, because you'll already know the people, which has its benefits. And I mean, Facebook is, yeah, there's negatives, but. Uh, is yeah, it, wait, is this trolling when right? there's someone constantly sending you positive emojis? <laughs> because like it's all positive <laughs> feedback, but like. I agree. Uh, so there, there's another aspect to, to VR as well is, is identity building. And a lot of people, they really use their, their identities and their personalities and even their, their username as, yeah, as an identity. And as you build that identity, you don't really want to jeopardize that because the benefits of having an established identity are only going to increase as we go forward. And that's also um, a huge part of um, the financial investment aspect that was mentioned is if you have a financial investment in something, you're less likely to troll. And if if your personality and your your name and who you are as an identity in VR is directly tied to, oh, I don't know, maybe even getting loans in VR, which will be a thing here pretty soon, why why would you jeopardize your, your reputation if you have to start from ground zero every single time you do go troll somebody and and, and ruin that reputation? It's like it's like when you play D and D and you have a character that's level fifty five and you get wiped by the demigorgon. That sucks. Am I right? <laughs> you are right. No. God be with you <laughs> and bless your heart. And uh, we're, we're, I think we're we're good, right? Yeah. We're, we're good. Find the nugget. But, uh, 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 well, that's that's the nugget. Let's do a big group picture. I think that we give Sweet a big hug. I think we should all just give Sweet a if big hug. If you touch me, I oh, will boy, report hug. you to the moderators. Okay, never mind. Forget oh, about okay. him. Let's let's give it a uh, hug. Who wants a hug? hug? Get off me! If you get, get close, off. it gives oh you a warning God. line. That's cool. You grabbed my robot. Never mind. What did we decide? Are we are we collectively hugging somebody, or are we just spreading out? Hey, everyone, say try hard seven. Try hard seven on three. Three, two. I wanna see. It's not the um, real Sarah. Right, everyone else, get off the stage. Oh. We gotta give Sweet a chance here. <laughs> Yeah, Sweet. Sweet. Yeah, Sweet. Sweet. Needed his, Get up there. He needed his limelight. I, I kind of want to see what you're going to do. I have to go to bed soon. My mom wants me to go to bed, so let's let's hurry this up. There <laughs> we go. <laughs> you were just trolling him, weren't you? It disappeared the whole so all the trolls have to go to bed? Like, do they have a curfew? Like, they all live with their parents? And... <laughs> that line was amazing. My mom says I gotta go to bed. I can't troll you <laughs> now. Can everyone sit down, please? This is really. That's true. Uh, try and put. Coaster, sit the fuck down. We're we're waiting for Sweet Snag to give us his robotic wisdom. Never. You can't it's tell no. us the room where I come for an um, argument. Um. Hey. Freedom! Hey, this. I don't really, respect. Really? Listen. I I don't respect what you're doing. I know you're trying to okay. act tough around everyone else. And okay, oh. give someone else oh, a chance, you buddy. Oh, my own medicine. It's okay, oh. big boy. You don't have to worry about that. Hey, that's what your mom I, I calls me, buddy. I need to put on your diapers on for you. Get it, get a couple angles. About to roast this boy in blue. <laughs> now listen. Now listen here. Do you see these titties? Do you no. see these titties? <laughs> no. I have to use. Oh, extra, I have to turn on my extra zoom function to see those boy. <laughs> okay. Okay. From, from here on. I don't think I've got that hardware in implement. Rap battle. Sweet snag and ghoster right now. Oh, uh, yeah. okay, okay, I'm good with this, I'm cool. This Let's go. Get off Let's my go. stage. No, no, I, I call a rap battle here, now. Do it. Drop, bring it. Do it. Okay, listen here, blue boy. I put you in the stew, boy. Cook you up, boy. I'll throw you in the, the chew toy, boy. You're a dog. <laughs> hey, 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 Hulk, come here. I got a new toy. Let's go. Okay, stop. You're on a horse. Get out of here.
pretty solid, that dude. Bad, that was, yeah. that was yeah. pretty good. It's a burn. Oh, man. Here we go. Let's see if I still got this in me. Failure, Ghoster. I'm sorry. I know. I, I think you did. Thank you very much. It's a real shame, man. Can't really rap. Can't really sing. All you hear is for life and sings. Oh, wow. Never mind. I give up. You win. <laughs>